everyone and welcome to another SQL Query Training Tutorial with Learn at NoStar. In today's session, we are going to learn how to write a dynamic pivoting query. So we have already done a video on pivoting, which is converting your data from rows into columns using the pivot function. So we're going to use the same pivot function, but now instead of hard coding the column names, we are going to write a dynamic query, which will pick up the column names from the values in your rows and put them or convert them from rows as distinct column names so let's get started so we are going to work with the employee table I have created a demo table so this is the same table that we use in the pivot video so it is easier for you to understand now we have got values in this there are three columns name value and ID and in the name columns you have three categories like name gender and salary and then you have values for that and again it repeats so what we now want to achieve is make these name gender and salary as distinct columns so it would be something like this we want the id gender name and salary coming as distinct columns and their values from the rows picked up from these rows and getting converted into distinct column values. So let's get started. Okay, so we are quickly going to write the pivot query once again that we learned earlier. If you want to understand that query in detail and how the pivot function works, there's a link to the video above. You can click on that link. It's also in the description below. So you can go to that video and learn about the pivot function in detail. Okay, so let's write the query quickly. So the first step is to select our columns. So ID, name as you can give an alias, and then we have another column value from our table, which is dbo.employee1 table. And then we have to create this as a subquery. So as source table. Next step is to use the pivot function and then define an aggregate function on the column from which we want to pick up the values for the columns that we are going to generate. So the column names are going to come from the name column over here and the values are going to come from the value column over here. So we are going to perform this function on the value column and then we have to specify what are going to be our column names so e name n and then you have to put your column names which would be name gender and the third category that we have is salary and then just complete your square brackets and make it as a subquery again and call it as pivot underscore table and then the next step is simply to select these columns these column headings that we have hard coded over here and now the next step is to select these column headings that we have provided below so select okay so let's also select the ID column from the source table ID and these column headings that we have provided over here from and now if we execute this query okay we need one more bracket over here we didn't complete the brackets okay now let's run this query and this is the output that we have got and this is the expected output so we have got the name gender and salary generated as column headings now and the related values they have come in as distinct rows now what you want to do when you're doing dynamic pivoting is not to have hard code these values over here so what we now want to achieve is that whatever are the values mentioned in the name column like name gender salary maybe they add another category later on like the higher date or something so we want it to the query to dynamically pick up these category names and make them as distinct column names now to achieve that the first step is to find out the column name so how can you find out the uh, column names in a dynamic way so if you just run a uh, distinct on this column which has your category names uh, from the dbo dot 
employ one table you will get all the category names that you want to come as column names so here we've got the column names gender name and salary so just doing a distinct on that particular column from the original table will give you all the column names that you want now we want them to come in this format because we would be replacing what we are dynamically generating over here the column names and we want them to be provided in this format which means we want them to be separated by a comma now to separate uh, separate it with a comma we are going to use a simple function again which we have learned earlier it's called the string aggregate function if you want to uh, go into more details about how to use that function you can click on the link above or in the description below and go to that video tutorial on the string aggregate function as well it's a simple function in which you can use to aggregate different strings so we are going to use the select and you can just write that function over here string aggregate so if you select this function it will prompt you as to what it needs as its arguments so the first one it uh, needs is your expression and then the separator so the expression for us is going to be the name column from here and our separator is going to be a comma because we want these distinct uh, names to be separated by a comma from and we need to select the distinct name because in our original data we have these names repeating so we have to make sure that we select it on distinct name now if we execute this query okay so we have to give an alias to this subquery that we created okay let's call it t and now execute this query okay so now we will get the column name separated by a comma which is the format in which we can replace them over here okay so now if you observe it is in an alphabetically sorted order if you want a particular sorting to be implemented then you have to implement it in this query so you can use an order by and order by the way you want whether in alphabetically ascending order descending order or in if you want any custom sorting to be implemented okay so now that we have all these names we want to store the output of this query now to store the output of query any query dynamically you have to store them in certain variables to use a variable the first step is to declare a variable the variable would start with at so let's say because we are generating column names let's say at call and then we have to define our data type so the best data type and safest data type to define is and by char and then you have to define our length because this is going to be dynamic let's give max as the length so now we have declared this variable now we can store the value or the output of this query in this variable to store the output of this query we need to use set use the variable name and then just provide this query's output to this variable name so now in this variable you will have the output of this query to verify that let's use the print command it will print the output or the value that this column this variable gets assigned using this query so now if we execute till over here you will get the output printed in your output window which is gender name and salary which is what we expected so this is how we have now generated dynamically the column names now we want to use these dynamic column names which means we want to use this variable in the pivot query so how to use this variable in the pivot query so let's just try to go and replace this value over here so let's try to use this variable over here let's just put at call and then uh, let's remove the print statement from over here and let's bring it up and now let's execute the whole thing so if you will execute this query you will get an error message saying incorrect syntax near at call so 
this is where it is pointing to as incorrect syntax the reason why it is giving an incorrect syntax over here is because you cannot directly use any variable in a sql query you have to now frame this query in a way that you get the you get the value of this variable replaced in this query you have to frame this query as a string and then assign it to another variable and then execute using that variable name so it all might be sounding complex let's try to do that so what the first step that we are now going to do is declare another variable in which we would store the sql query in a text format and that is the query that we want to execute so to use any variable the first step is to declare that variable so let's declare at sql again let's say and by char max so now we have another variable now we need to set the value to this variable but before that we want to use the variable that we generated to store the dynamic column names so since we are going to create a sql which is a text sql so we are simply generating a text string that is what we are trying to do over here to generate any text string what is the step we are going to combine parts of the sql or parts of text together which means we are concatenating different strings together as a single string to concatenate what we need to use is the plus operator so let's say select id and then this part we want to come dynamically through the value of the variable at call so we are going to say plus call plus now you cannot just write plus at call okay first step is you have to use at call okay plus at call plus you cannot simply write that you have to mark it as a string to mark it as a string you have to use these quotes so the first part of the string is a hard coded value select id then you are going to take a value from a variable so that can simply be written and concatenated with a plus sign then you are concatenating another part of text which is this text so again you have to use your quotes so your quotes will end over here all right so now you have this is your first part of the string okay and because it is a text you have to put it within quotes then you have a variable value which you have concatenated with plus and then you have the third part of the string now there is one more place in which we need to replace that value which is over here so again we have to this third part of the string we are going to split so we are going to add that or end that string over here again we have to concatenate the variable value so i am going to use plus and then you have the last part of the string so again use a plus over here then use single quotes and you have your single quotes ending over here so this is how you can generate a text now this text if you want to check what is the what is the value of this text which is getting generated again we need to assign it to the variable that we created so we created a variable at sql over here and we are going to assign the value of this text to this variable to assign the value again you have to use the set Uh, keyword set at sql equal to and all this value now let's just before trying to execute this let's try to check what exactly is the sql statement that's getting generated so we can use the print command to do that okay now let's just execute this whole thing that we have written till print that sql and execute it okay cannot find it type and bachar so we made a mistake over here okay okay let's do it again okay and execute okay so if you look in the output window you'll see that a query has been generated as a text string select id gender name salary that is what we wanted from select id name whatever and here is itself again the values have got replaced with the value of the variable at cal okay at call okay so now instead of just printing the sql statement we actually want to execute this sql statement so that we can get the output that we desired so to execute the sql statement you have to use the keyword execute at sql 
all right now again if we execute if we run the whole part so you have to start executing from the declaration part which will declare your variables then set the values of your variables then create your sql query and then the last part is executing that sql query so now if you will execute this sql query okay so we again have an error because you need to give it in brackets okay so let's go back to the declare statement okay and execute this whole part till here and now if you execute you will get your output the way you want it again the sorting order of the columns is you can decide that in your query where you pull the column names from the values in the name column in the different rows but this is how you can convert your values from rows into different columns and here you do not need to hard code the column names you can use a sql to dynamically generate the column names based on the value or the data in your table. So this is how dynamic pivoting can be very useful in all these scenarios where you need to pivot the data and convert it from rows into columns and you have millions of or you have so many um, column values that you want to generate that you need to use the dynamic pivoting. I hope you that you found this video useful. If you did then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.